Hello and welcome people back to the channel. We've got more action to talk about. And of course, we've got Pro League starting in at the time of recording like two, three days. So once again, just a little bit ahead of the action for your Sunday entertainment here on this beautiful sunny weekend. I don't know where you guys are in the world, but in England, we've been all right. We've been blessed with some decent weather. It's like t-shirt and like a little jumper kind of weather which is very good for england you take you take it you take it you wear like a light jacket type vibe so it's, it's been good uh we've got pro league we're gonna talk through just today uh groups a and b we'll do c and d closer to the time because they don't start for about 10 ish days something like that um so do that a little bit closer to time we've we've also got the sunday off in the break between a and b so that's probably when you'll see next week's episode and then of course we have another one after that when we get towards the playoffs of course we can't even talk about the playoffs because we don't know who's going to be there but we'll make our predictions coming towards this before we get into it script brother how you doing yeah good mate um like you say lovely day at the moment so pretty happy well i say at the moment it's like 11 o'clock when we're recording <laughs> so you know it's been a lovely day exactly um it's actually my mum's birthday today so happy shout birthday out shout out mumsy <laughs> On the day of recording um yeah and uh so you know we had a little run out uh i've only just started driving this year so that was kind of cool you know just like taking my mum out for a little bit of brunch or whatever and uh yeah, yeah like nice day man nice day bought some records you know there we that go we're not gonna listen to for like six months <laughs> or whatever um but yeah yeah doing well working on the fits i mean what else what else is going on um yeah it, it was good bit of walking around you know the nearby city i suppose yeah it was good it was really good mate yeah. so thank you for asking I yeah, okay, fine <laughs> let's get into the action let's talk about what we've got to do with a pro league now let me bring this one up for you this is where we're going to start things over on group a then we'll move on towards group b there is a last chance stage in these the normally basically always as there has been for the last few years the only difference basically with uh this year's pro league the, the main difference basically with this year's pro league compared to uh previous seasons and years is that rather than this being a five week tournament to three week tournament and rather than it being one group per week it's two groups per week so a and b in week one and then c and d in group uh, in, in week two which first of all i gotta say i think it's a much better system i've always been a fan of pro league especially the recent pro leagues it's very much got that kind of beyond the summit vibe to it where it's very chilled out I, i'm very envious of the guys who are in person of course at this point, if you don't know already, myself and Shriv, we will be working Pro League. We're going to be on the B stream, but we are at home. But I'm quite envious of the guys in person. Um, just that kind of like, it, there's always something going on in the studio. It seems kind of vibes. Uh, and also, I know for a fact that absolutely massacre everybody at Table Tennis. So uh, I just want to kind of just, um, just, just want to, for the bragging rights, really. Just want to, but, um, yeah, I'd be awful. I would be, <laughs> it's right, there's other things. Table Tennis in about 15 years. The, 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 yeah. There's other games that you, be, you might be you might be able to sneak oh. shots. I mean, like the one v one, I'm getting absolutely slapped up at, like 100. percent Like uh, by yeah, I reckon I reckon it might be a battle for like me and Stunner if uh, you know we ever get in there <laughs> at the same sort of time. To be honest, for yeah. for the bottom spot, I don't know. I don't Wait, know. Was he bottom last spot. time? Uh, I don't know actually. I don't know in the end. <sighs> I'm gonna be honest. I think Machine I think, might have you know, been yeah, close, but he, he he had a rough run. I think he had like Dinko, who's actually pretty decent. Yeah, it's like his Dinko first game. Won it, eh? I time. think so. It was him versus. I want to say Sponge. Oh God, Sponge or Harry, maybe. Oh no, it was Harry. It was Harry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is the stuff. We're not there for that though. We're from home, so we'll, we'll make Strong our own power games. Strike history is is the one v one results. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. that's really exactly. stretching your knowledge. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but we'll be uh, we'll be uh, from home, so we'll we'll make our own fun. Um, but yeah, let, let, let's talk through the groups. We'll start over on Group A. Um, and this one, pretty spicy. Off the rip, getting the best team in the world currently right now with FaZe. Exactly what we want. Uh, Astralis, especially with the recent Astralis. This is, makes things really interesting for me. Virtus Pro with the big new change of Electronic. Another interesting storyline. And then some of these Tier 2 guys coming through that have actually been in really decent form, I think. Uh, 3D Max looking really okay. Uh, Saw, of course, that major run was very good from them. Fnatic even making it here was a bit of a surprise, but they seem to be slowly finding their form. Uh, Eternal Fire, of course, who have been now, I think, very close to being called a tier one team quite comfortably. And then Imperial, who I didn't really care that much about prior to the RMRs, but the new boys in this team are really solid. So yeah, how, how are you feeling overall coming towards this group? Yeah, so Group A, I feel, is um, you've highlighted, you know, given a good overview there, but I think it is relatively top-heavy at the moment. Yeah. To be honest with you, I feel like FaZe should 
maybe not the smoothest run, but they should be able uh, to take top spot here. Mm -hmm. Bit more of a battle between the rest of them, though. You know, we have this question mark around Astralis that is like, are they going to be able to have that same sort of form? Um, one would assume that FaZe will be able to beat them again, right? Mm -hmm. It was obviously a, a small rivalry there at Chengdu with Astralis winning the first matchup and then FaZe winning it when it was a bit more important. Yeah, so, pressure on kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and again, Astralis, they do look good and, and we're liking the device moves, but a lot of young players in here for sure. So that's something that certainly affects them. Maybe the environment of True. a pro league where, you know, you've got a lot of chances, you've got a lower bracket, you've got a last chance qualifier even going in. Um, so potentially they can perform a bit better there. So Astralis are kind of the other team to watch for me. Um, maybe VP a little bit, right? You've obviously got Electronic coming in with this team. That's exciting, but That's this cool. is the first outing for them, and usually it does take a lot of time for, for Jamie to get things going. Um, yeah, I don't know. Eternal Fire always do well in this environment as well. It's as maybe like it, They're a bit of an obvious dark horse, but all the same, I think that they could sneak through here if they beat Astralis in that opening game. Then all of a sudden, you know, anything is possible, right? Eternal yeah. Fire always sort of feel that way in... Uh, the I, I don't know how you want to word it what you'd want to say but it's it certainly pro league to begin with because there's so many games going on i think pressure yeah is, is ultimately the best word for it you know i don't yeah. want to like offend the legitimacy of pro league by sort of saying anything else but i think people can understand what i'm sort of getting at that there's just mm -hmm. a lot of chances here and some teams perform quite well when it yeah. feels like you know this is not last chance for them straight out of the gate yeah because there's lower bracket and then last chance so in that sense you kind of if you if you at least pick up a couple of wins you're gonna guarantee yourself basically three chances of survival which i think at the very at the very least um you question at, at times teams like phase for example just because of um phase for me are always you know we always see it we even saw it at chengdu right they're a side who they only really ramp it up when the pressure is on. Um, sometimes in, in groups, they can look a little lackadaisical. That's probably the way I go about it. One thing I do love as well, no best of ones. Beautiful to see. Best of threes off True. the rip. It's exactly what we want, right? Uh, best of ones, I don't know. I think in MR12 now, it, 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 we're not a fan of. Best of threes, we love to see. Let, let's go through uh, one by one and go game by game predictions here. Phase Imperial. I think it's pretty simple to say phase here. However, Imperial, I've been really liking what this team have been producing. I think this team are actually yeah. low-key quite scary. I think Vinny's calling really well um, and making this team look super competent. But for me, the, the, the kid who's just unbelievable, no way. No way in Disney, actually both of them, but no way in particular, um, mechanically is just so scary. I know Maui was on stream the other day watching a bunch of his demos. Um, he dropped like 27 and a half and then lost... The, the second half and the map yeah. um yeah, yeah. but like obviously it wasn't really kind of like his fault he was doing all of his job but yeah that kid is so talented so i hope imperial can make a competition out of this my assumption though is that phase should make it relatively comfortable though yeah i mean you'd assume so right uh, this is obviously a, a team that's looking really good at the moment um major is a little bit of a hiccup for them but mm. ultimately very 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 close to three uh wins in a row True. You know, which is and again it continues what is it like eight finals in cs2 now seven in a row something like that um and obviously winning two events in there so yeah really impressive you'd expect them to look like the best team yeah. in this matchup in this group you never really know with phase this might be the first game that they they drop right and imperial are a team that can sneak under a little bit maybe you've not done as much direct prep the one True. thing for phase at the moment is they have not really missed a tournament they're getting in all these grand finals they're getting the, the win at Chengdu and whatnot mm. but they've not had a lot of time to reset that's maybe one of the things maybe that I could yeah. um, speak to here but yeah I, I know you uh, say that you like Imperial the way that they look and whatnot I, I think they could take a game a little bit later on but yeah, I, think I don't think it's phase. should be able to get them like easily. Yeah, yeah. I also right. think the veto is pretty favorable to phase as well, which is going to be one of the big things. Um, Imperial, they have these moments where parts of their pool are a little bit lackluster for me, and I think that can it can just be a little costly. And I think that's one of the things I'm going to look towards. Uh, generally speaking, then we've got the second best three. This one I feel like is actually a little bit more of a debate yeah, of sure. that Astralis and Eternal Fire. I'm actually going to lean current form here rather than maybe favorites i mean center fire seventh in the world so you kind of um giving them their credit in all fairness they actually looked pretty hot 
um at the major the only thing is uh they just lost the eswc the esports world cup qualifiers to sashi in the finals and sashi have got the spot which is kind of a bit wild um probably not the series that it's i would have wanted i didn't end up catching it bar the start of the first map but um i don't know whether confidence gets knocked at all not qualifying it's probably just quite tilting we, we could do a whole video on the <laughs> yeah. sashi run yeah. i'm sure wild yeah <laughs> to be honest i mean we'll probably end up getting back to this closer to when the esports world cup happens like so we'll do one of these right and we'll just talk about like how the fuck did sashi get here like <laughs> it's like how was sashi the qualifying team oh. uh, in a qualifier with c9 eternal fire amcal yeah, yeah exactly it's yeah. so bad you got game gaming gladiators looking decent it's true know, representing it's true. at the major uh astralis looking good at chengdu now we got sashi bringing up the rear it's mm. crazy out here you know it's just like yeah, 2018 man. all over again <laughs> exactly what, what, what what's the force that astralis to turn off fire who do you think takes it? i'm i'm actually quite heavily leading astralis here just off the back of chengdu i love yeah, what i, I saw at chengdu so. even the game I we casted so. as well they looked like seriously good i think in particular stown and yabby looked way more on form than they had prior they looked so uncomfortable under blame f but they looked anything but under device they've obviously got all their roles back device mentioned this they got all their positions back and it's showing they just look a little bit more alive and device as well actually bar that last series um individual form didn't really take a hit he was he was he was fine and hitting his shots yeah I, I think so too um on the side of astralis i believe that the chengdu tape and everything is going to come really really in now in pro league and again mm. it is one of these tournaments where you've got all the games going on um get that motivation get that discipline that work that you've done in between there is the sort of same argument as phase where they've maybe not had uh, an awful lot of time to reset but again it just comes down to okay device coming in as igl we weren't really sure what to expect the team look really good completely revitalized and now moving into something like pro league they should be able to take that same energy and carry it over so yeah, yeah for an opening game uh you definitely expect them to do well here i think astralis are hopefully a team that we revisit with into playoffs and we go okay what yes. did we see did they drop down into lowers were there some close games in there that shouldn't have been close etc cetera, etc cetera. but the uh, eternal fire game here i don't think it will be easy right and eternal fire are a very different style of team to deal with mm -hmm. um and then you do have to be careful of this honeymoon period with astralis because again you have to bear in mind the phase win was pretty legit it was beyond that a lot of their opponents weren't amazing mm -hmm. you know um so I, I do feel that they just have to be a bit careful with that but yeah they should be able to take this one yeah absolutely and then moving on to Virtus pro versus fanatic now for me this one's not really a competition um i've caught a bit of this fanatic side i'm still not sold on them i'm gonna be perfectly honest i think they're a little bit uh yellow yeah, with dicey not fully sold on afro in this team he just looks a little bit uncomfortable individually uh even though his rating doesn't look that good i think body is so important to this team um he is really really impressive when he gets going um and actually another guy who doesn't play the greatest of roles is qb and i, I really actually rate him as a rifle i think one of the young kind of german rifles coming through um also one of those guys who definitely is probably someone to keep an eye on for the future big are always looking at making changes especially when this team look a little dicey this is a german speaking guy uh but also if a total fire have made changes and i'm right in saying he speaks turkish as well so um there is that world there um you know some of those guys are getting on a bit in all fairness uh no twist about it but also they're doing pretty well at the moment so i don't think they're making changes but i think yeah he's pretty talented i think obviously matty's has been one of the the real kind of hot prospects of this team but there's no comparison for me. I, I think just individually, Flit and Fame. This will be like what we saw. Um, was it at Chengdu? Yeah, it was at Chengdu. It was it was them against, um, what they called a wild card. Where, so that yeah. was the game before we got on, but we were watching yeah. it. Uh, it was like a little bit delayed or whatever, day one. And uh, Flit and Fame just held W. Up, up Inferno, on Banana, just running over wild card. Because they're not going to not gonna show them any respect. And I don't think VP will show these guys any respect here. They don't need to. There's, there's literally no need. you got... Flit and Fame are two of the best riflers in that region. Unbelievably talented. Then you've got one of the most successful riflers from that region and one of the all-time greats from that region uh, now joining as the new the new player. You know, we talk about honeymoon phases. I feel like this is probably a good, a good time for it. And then one of the best orps, IGLs, whatever you want to call it, 
and Norbert's a, a fucking stud, man. This guy is like back. I, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear any slander. This guy is back and he's rocking and rolling. So yeah, I'm actually very much. I'm very on the VP hype train with this electronic signing. He role wise as well. Like, you know, not to be on the, the bush. Mir was just shit from the get go. Like he was not good in my opinion. I just really, I didn't like the, the pick up from the get from like the you know immediately. But I think this is a really solid team though. I don't actually see any weaknesses in VP at the moment like this seem seems to look pretty good to me yeah for sure i i'm definitely there to agree i think electronic uh stat wise is just an immediate upgrade you know you really can't go wrong even if he's going to play some of the more difficult roles one would assume they'd give them to norbert maybe not for this event though right like let's yeah. just kind of uh bet everyone in see see how it fits and and see what we like they might just one for one electronic with all the mirrors positions especially with an igl like jame it's obviously very structured and, and thought out and whatnot um, but it is kind of interesting. I think, you know, the Mirror Edition was definitely a move that felt like VP of old, where it was all around sort of play around Jame. He needs a bit of support, try and get some numbers in there. But, you know, all about the orb, all about Jame um, and all about the percentages. Whereas mm. uh, they've kind of moved away from that, really. Um, and they are looking for better stats, better fighters and taking some pressure off Jame, actually, especially into yeah. CS2 and after the major that they, they won in Rio everyone's sort of figured it out a little bit um and yeah vp becomes a very interesting game although they are difficult to play against and it feels like they'll always be difficult to play against just the way that they really try and you know squeeze the the blood out of the stone i think a lot of teams especially at that higher level that playoff kind of level figured out that it's like okay we just need a clean break into a bomb site and then there's not going to be anyone around to uh try and contest us you yeah. know no one's going to get aggressive no one's going to get crazy in a 1v4 situation <laughs> to try and save the round from nowhere For sure. um so yeah I, I think that the mere pickup was maybe a bit quick as well mm. um if i'm remembering correctly it's just sort of after the whole sort of chiron situation yours right? so, yeah you know yeah. they they've moved him out they've got norbert back in uh, don't really know what to do you know there, there were gaps there were mm. gaps that needed sort of filling and and Mir felt like a good role player to to pick up, but just uh, unfortunately not able to match up. So I'm I'm also with VP. Um, I'll not give too much chat to Fnatic. There's really just not a lot of spark behind this team. They don't have an identity, do they? They're just yeah, exactly. You've you've got Crims who always looks good. Mm -hmm. um, Body's actually a pretty decent IGL within the tier two space. He was doing well, mm -hmm. but I think a large part of like you know Body uh, Afro, obviously Jocko for a little bit as well was was all about like being french you know yeah, they played yeah. a very very french that was so aggressive yeah. always forcing relying on individuals and i think that they have just lost a little bit of that and um yeah there's some decent bits here but there's nothing super exciting okay. um so in terms of an opening game it's definitely vp yeah i'm with you and then moving on to the final game of this one 3d max taking on saw now i think this game is actually quite close just because I caught 3D Max of the day, and they actually looked really solid. They played, uh, well, like you said, you know, kind of French Counter Strike. It's so aggressive, so in your face, um, just so fun as well to watch. But I'm pretty sure they lost the series, so it didn't really make a big difference at the end of the, end of the day. I think for me, I'm leading pretty heavily. Not pretty heavily. I'm actually I'm leading is relatively evenly, but I'm leading Saw. Um, recent and experience, uh, everything there looks okay. The only hiccup I have for Saw is recently they lost to sampi in the thunder pick qualifiers that was a bit of a it wasn't you know a bit of a faux pas from them in a way they should be making it past sampi no bother i mean in, in, a, in a tournament like thunder pick with them being i think if i'm right in saying the number one team on their side of the bracket they should have got all the way to the final but they lost it on their second best three they won their first and lost their second in like you know an eight stage process or whatever to the final so um that's the only thing I'm going to play devil's advocate and just say it was, you know, strat saving for pro league type vibe. This is a side who just made it to the major. They've also qualified to blast London as well. I, th I don't think there's uh, too much to be worried about with that one loss. I do think also saw a different beast online as they are on land on land. They just seem True. much more clean online. They're very flaky at times. So I'm going saw here, but I think it actually could be a close game. I, I, as much as it sounds very flip floppy, um, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a 3D Max win, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I, um, I think, I, I, to be honest, I feel like I'm pretty heavily sore. Mm -hmm. um, 
again, the 3D Max team doesn't really excite me. At one time, some of these players might have done. An sure. Exorcist, a Maka. You know, these were guys um, two or three years ago, probably even more yeah. for Maka, that people were, were looking at and being like, oh, yeah, this is kind of exciting. Maybe French Counter-Strike back a little bit, you yeah. know, and, and building up behind uh, Zaiwu and stuff like this. But they just seem to have a very clear ceiling. And yes. they've never been able to move beyond that. Yeah. Um, to be honest, yeah, I don't, I don't have too much to add. Uh, Gravity, I'm kind of interested to see. I've not actually seen him play he's, very much. He's so pretty good. Be kind of interesting. He's pretty good. Um, he's, he's getting a lot of space, more than I thought he would. As someone who, it's this is a big step up for him. I I, I did an interview with him post game when they. Oh no, they they won. Yeah, because I just I spoke to him. Um, yeah, and he said, you know, basically for him, this is his first time playing with like like legends kind of thing so like it's like a it is a big step for him but they're actually giving him quite a bit of space okay fair enough i mean i yeah they could be cool they could take a map but i think that saw will be uh the better team in this one for mm -hmm. sure I'd, I'd yeah for me it's sort of without a shadow of a doubt i think that this is an event where they'll be again very much looking to prove themselves it's yeah. a perfect time for it you have a few of these uh top teams that we're talking about in group a that are a little bit tired Mm. all three that we've really touched on as being you know very very exciting phase astralis versus pro there is that little bit in there you never know there might have been a delayed flight yeah. somewhere or <laughs> something that they've come back to at home that they uh -huh. had to deal with and they've not had chance to reset and get into you know and it, it it's you're in that flow of like okay what's next oh i've got two days one where i need to Sleep. reset from all the jet lag yeah one where i need to yeah maybe just actually catch up on some proper sleep because <laughs> as i'm sure lots of people know out there like the jet lag sleep is really not the greatest your circadian rhythm is off from your body and all that yeah. sort of stuff it, i'm sure they've got protocols in place to reset all that for these guys by now but all the same um there is a little bit of room in there for a couple of these teams that saw eternal fire are the two that stand out to me yeah to maybe just sneak in and and uh you know snatch some games away let's finish off the group by then just running through in order the top four so it's first place goes directly to the quarterfinals second goes to the playoff round two uh third goes to the playoff round three with the last chance qualifier winner so for me i'm going uh phase one I'm going Astralis 2, I'm going VP3, and then the last chance team, I'm actually probably going to go Eternal Fire. So, yeah, Phase, Astralis, VP, Eternal Fire in order yeah. is what I'm going to go with for mine. The only one that I would throw out there as a potential, as a maybe, is Imperial on that last chance qualifier. That's my, that's my, okay. that's my, do that's my dark horse, is, is coming through this group A, is Imperial. Um, but that, that's what I'm, I'm going to go phase Astralis VP Eternal Fire in order. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of the same. I would flip VP and Astralis personally. Okay. I think VP will do a little bit better than, uh, than Astralis. Um, again, especially with electronic coming in, I think he's just going to be such a, mm -hmm. a one for one. Um, and I think he might be a bit more comfortable in this. Obviously there's going to be the, the Jame style, the Jame, uh, buy-in and everything, but mm -hmm. he'll be ready for that. You know, that will have been yeah. in the contract somewhere. I'm sure. True. Um, <laughs> And I just think that the environment, we've talked about this already, the environment at Cloud9 is really not great. Uh, again, seen yeah. recently with the Sashi game, I suppose. And I, um, do you know what? They just don't look good, you know? You've actually pretty, brought a pretty good talking point about Cloud9, because obviously they were, they were meant to be here, and they pulled out. I, I think, and you know, there's no, no, I don't think there's confirmation. And this is not me, you know, knowing stuff behind the scenes and then just, you know, leaking it. Um, but my speculation is that, Electro might have dropped them in it a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Because think so. them dropping out, not finding time for a replacement, makes me think that he just didn't give them a lot of time at all prior to Pro League before he's like, yeah, by the way, boys, I'm going to uh, yeah. VP. The rumor that I think was from Overdrive, I think off the top of my head, was 1.5 mil is how much VP paid for Electro Electronic, which is insane, insane cash. 1.5 mil dollars. Bro, there's no way. That's what Overdrive said. I'm not not that you know what he says goes, but I don't know any other. What an NA an NA org? There's no way. Apparently, it is no well, but it's is buyout. Yeah, yeah. So he, he said surely. electronic electronics transfer cost uh, elect electronics transfer cost more than one point five mil dollars. But then the only thing that makes you think that doesn't make sense is that C9 paid two mil for the roster. So. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's true. Yeah, one point five mil. It's, it I mean, sounds it, it, sure. It might be, it might be a fair chunk, but you've got like all this kind of people say maybe the money see number is a bit higher. Yeah, it makes you like wonder what six hundred k is conjecture for money see. Um, but let's go with that. What's going to be more than that? Eight hundred to a mil. It's like you know in the CIS region. There's no way. Yeah. VP. I don't want to go into this super deep or whatever, but there's no way VP as an org are paying that much. However. For electronic fury for paid 700k to, to fallen yeah but he's he he's got way more mate he, he's not just a player he's a uh, player. again yeah that's true that's you true what i mean i I'm realistically in brazil he probably sold to the, bring the godfather home <laughs> yeah he probably yeah. made that money back in jersey sales realistically so it's like, it's like, sure. it's like ronaldo sure. going back to man united to just stink up the gaff right yeah, he made like he made it back in a day you know with, with the shirt sales so he's in um Adverts and everything fallen. Yeah, yeah, sure. he is a mega celebrity. Like, I'm that was mega. in the um, yeah, in the like the uh, uh, Red Bull moments of CS:GO. Yes, yes. He spoke yeah, yeah. about replacing, funnily enough, Ronaldo Re on like yeah. a shampoo advert or whatever. So I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's he a bit is... more to that. Yeah, it's a business 700K deal. Is, as a brand deal, 700k is actually not that bad, <laughs> um, to be honest. But yeah, yeah. um, so. What were we even talking about? I don't remember. We, you you're doing your top four, money. and then we, then we. Ah, yeah, top four. You went yeah, VP yeah, yeah. two. Yeah, because electronic is like a full on, you know, stats stat swap, and I think yeah. he will just boost the team, um, pretty quickly, and I don't know, they might have a bit of fun with it, but yeah, I think I remember what we sort of got onto. You said that Cloud Nine sort of dropped in it and and whatnot. Mm. That definitely feels like the case to me. I think the thing is as well with an event like Pro League. Because there's so many teams going on, you've got all these groups, you know, you've got teams coming in and out, and it's all logistically a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. You've got to get them all into Malta, you know, stuff like this. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like a hard roster lock for yes, something there's... like Pro League. Um, whereas, you know, maybe a blast groups or something that they might be a bit more lenient. But with something like Pro League, it is logistically a, a big challenge. So I think they need to know who's coming and going and who's got, you know, visas sorted and stuff like this. Yeah. Um, so. I feel like because of that, there is a, a pretty big chance that he has just kind of dropped them in it a little bit. You know, um, VP have reached out to him or he's reached out to them or Jame or whatever. And they've got the, the cogs in motion and it's just dotted line is the last thing. Yeah. All he has to do. Then tell C9. Somewhere, yeah. The way, somewhere I'm in the contract, this. I would say they, they need to know if negotiations are going on before you sign anything serious. But, you know, um, that's always done a little bit weird, and it he'll mm. probably have gone to Cloud Nine and say, "I'm gonna leave if an offer comes in," and then like two days later, an VP offer comes in, an offer. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, okay, so, all right, all right, buddy. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, but let's move on to Group B, and I think this one, honestly, for me, feels considerably easier to talk about. Um, another quite like quite top heavy in in a few of these matchups. Um, we'll start at the top. Vitality taking on Sharks. Uh, oh, wow. I, I think I'm allowed to laugh. <laughs> I think I'm allowed to laugh. Um, the second seed uh, overall, in the I think the second seed, I'm right in saying. Oh, they actually might be wrong. No, they're actually not. They're actually, oh my God, they're technically fifth seed or fifth highest rated team coming in. Um, but I forgot they've dropped to sixth now. It's actually quite a big, mm -hmm. quite a big dip. From, the, from, the Kato, Kato result really. Yeah, really fucked them. Yeah, yeah, yeah it did. Them. Yeah. Uh, but they are versus the bottom seed. Um, and I've caught a couple of Sharks games a while back. I caught one in a, I want to say a CCT something or other because Colex and then McHenry, McHenry was, was casting it. Um, and I just wanted to... Uh, All government. Just, just wanted to... No, no. <laughs> just wanted to... <laughs> uh, wanted to support the boys. Um and then another one because it was the best of one somewhere. Um, but yeah, they're pretty ass, man. They're not very good. Um, <laughs> uh, this honestly, like, no joke. This could be, this could be if Vizati play properly, right, and don't fuck about. This could be the quickest series all tournament. Like, no joke. Like that's how that's how one sided it could be. If Sphinx hits his form, if Flames it, 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 does his role, especially on the CT side well, and if Zywoo does Zywoo thing, actually plays at that kind of 
1.35 rating and he's out averaging at the moment this could be a massacre the, the thing is and the only real kind of caveat i guess to that is the case of zaiwu has at times looked a little not iffy but you know we also know playoff zaiwu is not the same as group zaiwu so we need to see sure. group zaiwu really live up to that kind of oh group zaiwu type thing um but yeah that's where i'm going for this i think this could be an absolute massacre uh sharks they basically the demos I've seen these guys outside of the two games I've watched, I'm not being that impressive. Um, uh, Eric Enazal as well is like one of the only players that I actually think has a fairly decent amount of talent on this on this team. I know he's not the highest rated player, but I think he's probably the most influential in my opinion. Um, but I think they have a lot of weaknesses. They have a lot of weaknesses, and this is a side who fundamentally, when I was I watched a couple of demos, miss smokes. You know, the timing on trades was pretty woeful. I'm a little concerned. Um, I think Vitality can just come in towards this one and make it a speedy one. So I don't think it's too much of a conversation for me there. I think that th this one should be clean. Yeah, I don't really have too much to add. Um, I'm familiar with some of the players, but this, you know, five-man lineup, not really seen as much personally. So I think it's fair enough. You know, uh, it's it's an opportunity type vibe. It's a, exactly. you know, um, good chance for them to get out and get some real serious experience but then to turn that into something domestically rather than yeah making a deep run here where it does get interesting for this team i will say uh is potentially in in the lower side of things mm. you know i don't think they win this first game but um not to touch on too much you, you know m80 mongols tyloo these are teams that are beatable for sure mm -hmm. um tyloo in particular i think to be honest agree. they've really not looked good and it's recently, the new so. lineup now as well. It's the one with lyrics yeah. and, and and ZDR. Well, well, ZDR's been playing, but no advent. Thank fuck. So, um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the new team. So yeah. they could be in flux a little bit or whatever. So do, do, yeah. you, reckon, do you reckon they can make a lower bracket run? The old yeah, Sharks? Yeah, maybe lower bracket style. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I reckon there's a chance. You know, okay. um, M80, if I guess... We could use this as a segue to, yeah, yeah. to move into the uh, next matchup here. Uh, M80, of course, you know, a little bit of a weird kind of time for them. So, and and these players coming together, still getting a bit comfortable with each other, I think. Um, but they do look they do look quite good domestically. I think they're a pretty yeah. exciting team, you know, and, and with Slacks coming in. Um, they they would be the harder ones, but, you know, a Tyloo and a Mongols, you don't necessarily know what to expect out of them. And Sharks yeah. might be a team that surprise you a bit. Um, but yeah, I suppose moving moving forwards to the M eighty Bet Boom game, uh, I'll I'll open up here. I think Bet Boom like there's so there's so much like potential behind this team. These are all names that apart from Nafani, um, there's, there's no beef. There's not gonna be beef with what I'm about to say. Don't worry. About it. Uh, <laughs> Shame. He's he's watching this. He's watching this, and you know he's mm -hmm. like, oh, this guy's gonna just like everyone else. He's yeah, just gonna fuck put this down guy. some hate. Um, that nah, is it's just the fact that you know these are all names within the past sort of year or two that have turned a few heads within the tier two space mm. um zorte maybe a little bit longer than that for sure but i, I don't know it just doesn't seem to be working i think they're when, just not winning are they that's the yeah thing. it's like bet boom came in and they they named a few players we've had a couple of moves since then uh but you had sort of nafany coming behind Maui did the whole thing where he was like, oh, I'm sorry, Nafani, it seems like I was wrong. You know, you're, you're doing pretty well here. Um, that lasted all of about six weeks. And yeah. then the results have just not been great. Uh, but they do, they do, you know, make the qualifiers. They do uh, beat out the other tier two teams, I suppose. But once they come off against the, the bigger opposition, again, there's just nothing all that exciting. So I think M80 could genuinely win this game. I'm not going to lie to you. With like the yeah. form that they have and the drive that they will have behind them, uh, of being sort of, you know, you, you've you got um, other major representatives, like, you know, your Cloud9, your Complexity, uh, not Cloud9, uh, Liquid are like a, a level above in NA, but when it comes to like true NA grinders, M80 is sort of the representative there. So I think MA could, uh, M80 could mm. genuinely win this one out. Well, sure. ironically, I love this M80 team. I, I like, especially now, I think the Sin Edition is good. I, uh, had a bit of a conversation with this. I know originally, I, I, I'll be interested to what, what he says now, but I, when I, when it first happened, I spoke with Paladin about it. He wasn't hugely happy with it. Just obviously, you know, his tail, his tail end of uh, of big was pretty rough, right? I mean, it got, got to the point where he was being taken off the calling role. So it wasn't exactly good signs, but I like this. I think international guy bringing that over towards NA, um, 
gives them a, a, a bit of a fresh start. And so far, it's worked. They won a beat Liquid yesterday 2 0 in the Esports World Cup qualifiers to book the spot from NA. So they've got the spot. Obviously, Complexity have been invited, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they, they went in the qualifiers. I'm pretty sure they've been invited. But they beat Liquid and, like, you know, pretty comfortably. But Liquid played badly um, as well. But Malbs had a ridiculous, like, 1.3 something rating. And he's averaging a 1.3 something rating. This, this is, you know, Malbs is without a doubt one of the most talented uh, riflers in that region he, he has been for a long time seriously good slacks has a definitive ceiling above him is the my issue with this team um i saw it at the rmr granted they were playing with death so i'm going to give him the the uh benefit of the doubt i guess maybe um but i do like this team uh i really like swisher i think sin can bring a lot of positives obviously death's no longer in the server which i think he probably prefers um post rmr um, and they've actually, you know, they've got a, a player now, right? Because um, obviously Manx took some time away for personal reasons and I did leave them with a big hole in this team. I think they can beat Bebboom. I The only the only caveat I have up to that point is I love Magna Jez. I think this kid is unbelievable. He's so talented. I put him as like number two in my top 10 bowl predictions list for the year. And then like a week later, you got signed by Bebboom, which, you know, makes me happy because that's already like a dub in my book. This is like a, you know, just outside of the top 30 team getting a... Getting Magna Jez, he's so good. Not quite like next donk regen good, but he's, he's a serious talent from the region. Um, I think he'll be fully fledged tier one within two years, probably. Um, he's way too talented how, not how to be. How old is he now? 19? 18, I, th I don't even... Oh. I, I think he's about 18. Let me have a look. He, you might be right. No, he is 19. No, you are right. Yeah, 19. Um, so yeah, but yeah, he's young, right? That's the thing. Like he's still, you know, in the infancy stages of his career, I guess. I mean, obviously it's kind of weird in esports because then you have people like Donk, but um, generally speaking, he's still pretty young. Um, and this is kind of his first big team, obviously, because he's been on Spirit Academy. So he's never had the chance to play uh, regularly against the kind of the, the big boys. So I'm, I'm excited, man. I, I really want to see what this guy can do on LAN. Zorth is always very talented. Um, like you said, this, this Betbeam team has so much potential in the yeah. individuals all of them should be good i mean chiron as well even prior to the vp days was such an animal in the server but they just don't win and they don't win against good teams <laughs> um it, there's, there's no two ways about it and yeah they might pick up a win against m18 we wouldn't be wrong here but the second they face a vitality or later on like a g2 you just don't you don't, you don't back them at all because i think fundamentally more than just being out fragged in terms of the individuals i think they get out called not that i'm like a naffany hater i just think the depth of this team the strap book isn't that deep compared to some of these uh some, some of the big guns yeah the, it, it's kind of a weird thing i think you know bet boomer probably coming in a uh, fair bit of money you might have this as like a stopgap team for some of these players a bit of a for sale sign mm -hmm. for some of them others like zorte he's been confined to tier two for a long time yeah um not really given big chances you know, is there maybe a reason for that? Um, there was a period on Spirit, am I right in thinking? I think for a little bit for Zorte. Z I want to say, I think, like yeah, I'll say, yeah, ago. he had fours as well. And then he had. Yeah, fours, of course. Liquid, didn't he, right? When he went over for a little bit? Oh, my. We got we to check. This. I'm, we gotta check I'm, this. I'm not. I know it's late, but I'm pretty sure I'm not tweaking. No, I am uh, tweaking. No, it was no we're, both, we're both wrong. Oh, no, it's sorry. Just, he was he was rumored and then. Yeah, he was rumored, awesome and then the they stuck with him. Uh, stuck with this is when they stuck with OC, and everyone was like, "Why?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know, um, I remember that, and then I know I think there was like some of the Fours players moved over to Spirit, and then they. Cause I remember it was years ago. It was like twenty twenty one, mm. but still, I thought he was part of that uh, ilk of players. But you know, suppose not. That's fair enough. Fact check yourself, uh, live and direct. So that's that's fair, but. <laughs> He's, he's obviously like someone I think unfortunately that's just not had uh, a full-on taste there is some reason there is something mm. about his game um that people just don't quite like so yeah I, I don't know I, I think the the energy around this team you have a few people who are here happy to be involved there's probably some decent money behind bet boom mm. uh, which is always an angle you know you got to get real about it as as a pro player sometimes it's like okay I might not end up being a major winner. This is pretty good. I love the competition, but it might not get much better than this. And then you've got other players um, like a, a Magna Jez, maybe a Chiron, who are still trying to prove that they have what it takes, you know? Sure. So, sure. yeah. Um, I, I, that's all I've got to say if you want to move on to yeah, the, the next matchup. Falcons, Mongols. You, you want to kickstart us on this one? 
Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, because I got some, I got some shit to say here. To be honest, um, one sec. Clear my throat. You're really ready to go. getting ready for uh, this one. God damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, listen, man. I don't know. I don't know what is going on. I, I just think that you know, Falcons, like they're one of the oldest teams going. There's no one in here that is super sharp. You know, a talent. Mm that you'd want to see alongside Boros was maybe tested on that shore and, and there's some, there's some issues there beyond the game for yeah. Boros. And I think we're relatively aware of that. Uh, even prior to him joining Falcons, you know, surprised it went so well in Monty, but I think Monty, like the energy there was like, he's allowed to do whatever. Yeah. A bit of, you know, it's, it's kind of like when this is a wild analogy, but it's kind of <laughs> like when, you know, you're in year six and you're like a little bit of the top dog. Where are we going? There's now? not that many people going on. There's not. There's not that many people in school. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. Yeah. Yeah. You're 11, and then you move to big school, and it's like secondary then, school. Yeah, you, get, yeah. you get volleyed across the across yeah, the yard. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like <laughs> shut up. It, there's so <laughs> like, many, yeah. so many uh, people, and then everyone's like double the size of you. You know. Yeah. You start growing yet. So I think there's a. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but, but no, I feel it. I feel sense. it. Because <laughs> Boros, it's like I think he had a bit of that on Monty, where it was like you know people of the same sort of ilk. He's better than them just based on talent. Yeah. To be honest, right? It, it was it was easy times, but you weren't necessarily expecting him in the big games, in in the um, difficult opponents games and whatnot. Um, you weren't expecting him to take over there. Maybe he looks good, but. They're mm. going to eventually lose that out, right? Because it's vitality, for goodness sake, or it's phase or whatever, right? Um, into Falcons, I think the energy was a lot harder for him. The environment was a lot harder for him. They ask a lot more of you. They expect a lot more of you because mm. you've shown it. And he just couldn't quite get there. Um, but I don't know. I think the Dupree pickup, there's just nothing exciting about this team again. You know, they're another one of those, yeah. really. I think Magisk, Magisk, for me, stands out as a great player um so consistent super solid dupree though i feel like on preezy he's a little bit semi-retired almost you know what it i mean felt like it, it felt, yeah he was just chilling you know playing with the young guns trying to help them out become a mentor maybe explore like the idea of coaching or mm. whatever but obviously the bags come calling with falcons um and you know it's it's the homies as well they they also need a bit of help but yeah, I don't know. And and Snappy, for me, numbers-wise, is, is not really going to look good. I love the guy. You know, brilliant to have on for interviews and all that sort of stuff, right? But there's just not enough here for him to work with, mm -hmm. I don't think. And there's also two or three players some Pius now might expect to have his own sort of resource and whatnot. I don't know that Dupree and particularly Majisk are going to have um, the ability and the the full on respect to just let Snappy use them how he wants. You know yeah. what I mean? I think there's going to be a little bit more individuality there. So the the hot take with the Falcons Mongols game, I think Mongols could actually win. This. <laughs> so that was going to be my hot take. I actually think Mongols oh, win I'm it. So sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's good though because because we're actually you 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 basically hit, we're agreeing on it, yeah. yeah you hit all the points I want to talk about, which is essentially that I do think at the moment. Falcons, I don't think are in a, in a good spot. I caught them a bit in the open qual for the Esports World Cup. Didn't look great. Oh no, no, it wasn't Esports World Cup. It was some other qualifier. Um, didn't look great. Uh, I don't know, man. I just think this addition of Dupree. The big thing when you lose Boros, and it's probably the issue basically for the likes of basically when you think of um, let's let's think of kind of Snappy and and, and some Pius previously, right? on uh on 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 ends right they had nerds it's like a big injection of yeah. firepower the big man that they can send out someone who can close around someone who can lurk super effectively if they ever needed him to as well they could be like right nerds we really need you to you know hear a rifle and crack open a site for us go and do this but you know they can always kind of leave him to his own devices boros they couldn't they had to micromanage him a little bit obviously because that's just kind of how he is as a player and then i, I think just now with the addition of dupree like i think for me stats feel a little inflated i'm not even really looking at kind of his 1.5 1.15 rating now but you know he dipped into his tier two he was playing a lot of pretty ass competition um and that pretty team had a lot of good talent on them they're actually a very decent tier two team they were definitely the upper echelon of tier two um but 
I, I, I just don't think they have the raw firepower here. I, I, you know, when you look at this team and you're like, right, who's going to be the dedicated entry who's going to crack open and get two, three kills? It's like, yeah, no one. Like, maybe Majisk, but then like, no. But then Dupree was kind of doing it a little bit on Preezy, but then is he going to be able to do it at a tier one level against riflers like uh, Flames? Uh, you know what I mean? Like, anchoring a site? No, I don't think so. I think he's going to get out of aim. So I, I think fundamentally this Falcon team just lack firepower. Like, it's all well and go good that you have the structure and the setup and, you know, the system yeah. and all this. But, you know, your average age is 29. And I'm not saying that age makes, a, like, the biggest of differences. But this is a an old way of thinking, which I think is some, it is just working. Yes, the ranking is 12 in the world. It is still pretty good. But I think it's slightly inflated. For me, I really do like Mongols. I think they have two guys who can AWP at a very high level. I know Nine says the primary, but I think Techno can also AWP very well when he wants to. I think Blitz is an absolute maniac when he gets going. My only gripe with the Mongols is bless him because he's like loveliest, like he looks like you know the cutest fella ever, right? Mazzino is so shit on LAN. I don't know what happens. He's so good online. Like the Mongols just qualified for the Esports World Cup, right? Beating Rare Atom in the final two one. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't actually catch the tail end of the game, but from what I heard, Mazzino's playing quite well. He's very good online, but on LAN, I mean, I can't remember if it was, I don't think it was Kato. There was like one game in particular where he was like single digit kills heading into was overtime. Like it was like not good. Um, he was also, he's young. He's like 17, I want to say 16, 17. He's pretty young. Um, so I'm going to give him, you know, a little bit of benefit of doubt. Say, so you know, he's pretty new to this. That's my only real worry that at times Mongols feel like they're playing 4v5, but I still think they actually can win. I, I think Blitz can sometimes just take over and I, uh, it'd be kind of funny if it happens. It'd be kind of based because uh, yeah. I do think Falcons still need another change. I, I don't think, I love Dupree, you know, the most successful technically major candidate, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, for me, I think this team is what it is. But final game, Tyloo G2, one-sided i think as much as it's funny to hate on g2 as much as it's funny to laugh at them when they lose because uh they shouldn't kick jks i'm still not over it still the worst decision ever um but uh tyloo i don't think are going to compete this is a side who yes now they don't have advent which i guess is nice oh no wait i'm lying he is here but i don't know if that's yeah, i was gonna say he's listed is, yeah is or... he listed on this team he, i think i'm, no I'm gonna we've got lyrics because they have about 20 people on the roster you look at the roster yeah, so they have no, Advent, like, Champion, yeah. Kaze, Mercury, ZDR, Danking, Aristo, Freeman, Mosea, Almond, Lyrics. So my understanding was this team was going to be Jamyoung, uh, Mercury, ZDR, Lyrics, and Mosea back in. But Advent's been playing recently. Like if you look at, actually, let's even look at the Esports World Cup. Was Advent playing in their games? That would be a big... That'll be a big thing for me. He was. So yeah. my assumption, this is probably going to be their team of Jam Young, Mercury, Kaze, Advent, ZDR. If that is the case, then I'm very concerned because, um, you know, they signed these these guys and they're not using them, right? And like, Mosea got benched because apparently Mosea doesn't listen to calls. That's that's the rumor on the oh. rumor mill is that Mosea just, just, just does not back Advent at all. Um, he I just... Mean I, I, I agree with him. I'm with Mosea. Free him. Free him. If I'm an epic lamb. Yeah. And I've got an advent style IGL. And I'm out here, you know. Mosea is crisp, IGL. man. I'm probably I'm probably going to be like, I don't know, dude. You yeah, know, I can't lie. Making, making it real hard. And then it just takes that one call, doesn't it? You know, yeah, quarterfinals. Oh, man. I know I know. Advent has found a lot of talent and like nurtured them. You know, he found Jam Young in like, a face at Pog or their equivalent or whatever, whatever that I think perfect. Yeah, I think Mosea was the same. I think right? he was the same, right? However, when you've got these guys who are so talented and you're not using them, sometimes, and this is probably what Mosea did and why he got benched. He probably was just like, Advent, scoreboard fella? Nah, that's what I thought. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, Advent, mate, you're going three and 20. I don't think it's your time to shine here. Um, but really, see, Advent, sh so he, he should have gone a long time, time out, ago. Guys. Time out, guys. Listen yeah. to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a hero AK. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna AK you, here. It's like, mate, you got, you just got four kills. We're, we're 32 rounds in deep in triple OT, mate. What do you mean you got? You're gonna get an AK out? Um, 
no, I mean, I've it, I, I, uh, I know he's done so much for this team and for these players. And I know we talk about loyalty, but fucking hell, there's got to come a point where we're like, yeah. this, he is like the third lowest land rated player of all time. Like, come on, man. Like, this is, there's got to be a point. And the people above him, I think like one of them is like, I want to say it's like Ocean. And then I can't remember who the other one is. Uh, yeah, but it's not good. But I remember somebody, somebody showed me the leaderboard and it weren't great. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is a guy who for me is, he should have left the team a long time ago. He hasn't. And as much as I hate to say it, I also think Kaze should have gone too. Um, I think if I'm right in saying Lyrics was the orper, but also Tyloo did a tweet saying this 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 team that would had no advent and no Kaze, they, you know, fresh look. They literally did a tweet like a month and a half ago and then I've not used that team once. So what was the point of this tweet, tweet with the graphic and the pictures and them and the jerseys? They did all this stuff and then I've not used this team once. So I, <laughs> I, I fully don't understand. And the worst thing about it, it's similar to the CIS region is they don't really use Twitter. So we don't really know what's going yeah. on ever. Um, we, re we basically like need insiders to, to, to tell us everything. And funnily enough, the best insider is Dan King. He's like the top dog streamer. He is like the big, he's like a huge streamer now. Um, making apparently like mega money. Um, but he's also signed to Ty Lu. So arguably yeah. he would know more than most. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. As you can tell, this Ty Lu team really hits a nerve on me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you are, you are pissed. Yeah, yeah. Just because they're just shit. Like, they're just so annoyingly bad. And like, it's also, it just like, holds Jam Young we... back, who's so talented. Yeah, I was going to say, there's there's a big tilting aspect because when he came on the scene as Rare Atom, um, oh man, there was an international event. It wasn't like the major circuit because that was the Mongolian players. But there was an international event. I'm trying to think, I can't even think. A couple of years ago, was this COVID time when they first came on? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, let me do a little bit of digging here because I do want to find this as soon. Yeah. Work me uh, slightly. Um, where that? They did well into. Okay, this is going to be confusing because <laughs> it's rare. I'm still going. Oh yeah, I've true. Got, I've got this up on on my end as well. Uh, so I'm thinking, like one of the events that I'm thinking of that I did was Valencia. Is that just the event? I'm yeah, Valencia of? makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, th I think so. Maybe they came like top four at Valencia, which was like a decent performance for them. Yeah. Um. So, and I believe you know we had a bit of info in from Blair about them. Mm -hmm. um they've also they won like the uh extremum or extremes oh, land. extremes land extremes yeah land, yeah, yeah, yeah uh of of the same year so they were doing quite well domestically but they kind of you know burst onto the scene few new names i think was the thing that we've obviously touched on a little bit uh, uh jam young and, and mosaic and whatnot um and i think they brought back kaze or something so yes yeah, you know, they when they yeah. first came together so i think you know people were quite excited to see this team so we know that there is a decent ceiling on them it's just like this past year, especially they have been tumbling and tumbling and tumbling. Yeah, they're like know. they're not even really weird. They're like arguably not even top three anymore. I mean, like yeah. I think you know in the region, Mongols I think are undoubtedly a number one, um, and then I think I would say Lind Vision are number two. Yeah, like and then, super domestically, Lind yeah, Vision are definitely the best. And then recently, the new look Rare Atom, you know they they made it all the way to the finals of uh, the Esports World Cup. You know, so. Um, yeah, you know, like the, the post Fousey, post Corey era of Rare Atom. It's like, yeah. Um, yeah. But then Fousey qualified for the Middle East qualifier. So my goat, my goat. Still going to be there in Riyadh. So I, I got to respect it. I got to respect it. But, uh, okay, hiccups. Um, yeah. This uh, this side of the team annoy me. I think there's actually a genuine... It, re, the way they've been playing recently is why well, I caught them in... The Esports World Cup wasn't great in the qualifiers. And I caught them in something else. I want to say Challenger, ESL Challenger before this as well um the way they've been playing recently unironically they could not even pick up a map this tournament that's how bad they've been like i could as much as it hurts me i can make i can make strong arguments that sharks are two zero them um so that that's gonna be the fire game hopefully we yeah. get the cast a bit of that. do you know what i actually like sometimes getting in the getting in the trenches a little bit is quite funny so yeah. um yeah. yeah that's where i'm leaning i'm going g2 let's finish it off uh Top four, the same thing, and then we'll finish yep. off a little bit of fantasy. For me, uh, number one, I'm going to go Vitality. Number two, I'm going to go G2. Uh, number three, 
Now, as much as I'm going, I actually know I probably still will go Mongols number three here, and then my last chance qualifier. I think I'm gonna go Falcons. I think it's gonna be mine. That's where I want to go. As much as I want to say Falcons get three, I actually think if Mongols beat them, they basically just kind of guarantee that third spot, and I think Mongols can beat yeah. them. So I'm gonna go. Yeah. That's how I want to go. I'm gonna go Vitality, uh, G2. Mongols Falcons in that order. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think I'd be inclined to agree. There is something behind the Falcons team. You know, we sort of talk them to death a little bit, but mm. I don't think that this ilk of players allow themselves to uh, not qualify for the major and then check out of pro league pretty quickly. I agree. You know what I mean? I Especially after actually performing very well at Qatar. So the, the there is a little bit of potential behind them. Um, but yeah, so I just feel like the the caliber of of minds that they have mm. and whatnot will put in the discipline, will put in the hard work, and then if it doesn't, if they check out of this event as well, well, oh, then it gets interesting. I think they could implode if that happens. But in terms of the order, yeah, I'm in complete agreement. I think that yeah. is kind of the way that it goes for me as well. Yeah, the only argument I could actually like for myself is like if Falcons do win that first game, I think they probably get that third that third spot but so basically flip so basically like winner of yeah. that best of three essentially takes number three in the group let's finish things off with uh the age old everyone's kind of favorite the the old um fantasy right we'll, we'll have a little look at fantasy sure. um i'll start with mine uh i'll get mine up here it is this yeah. is what i am going for i'm going for a little bit of a okay let, let me explain my reasoning behind the madness so like i've in the past done quite well basically going for two golds right two you know top players yeah. and then having like the cheapest people around them uh i did want to kind of spread the love a little bit here so i'm going very much on the phase uh hype train i just want to go carrigan for the leader i think this is a team that will run deep in the tournament i think they'll go deep and he just guarantees points by putting him a leader um so i'm going to go him uh i don't think like realistically they could come into pro league and just walk not walk it but you know come into it and and win it relatively convincingly um they, it might there might be a you know a hiccup loss into a lower bracket somewhere but generally speaking phase have just looked so good but frozen's just too expensive um but he has been unbelievable um and then my big ticket player i went for spinks i do think i think vitality would have really been kicking themselves post major. It wasn't. It wasn't a good. Like in the start of the year, it's just not been good enough for them, right? In in yeah. their in their books, this is a side who should be getting. You know, they got they got the caliber to make it to a final of, or at least make a top four tournaments. And the fact that they didn't, I think they'll be thinking, you know, why not? So I think they would have spent a decent amount of time. That little kind of break away. Um, obviously, no, I am Chengdu as well. So that's a big kind of break of where hard scrim and pracking, whatever, whatever. So I think Spinks can bring some form. Rain. The caveman, you're right. Everyone loves that one about uh, him on or, or ancient, but this, this guy is just so reliable. Just, just I mean, he's relentless, isn't he? Just, he's just never given up this form. So consistent. Uh, no way, because I'm just a big fan of this guy. I do actually really like him. I'd actually, I, if I'm gonna call them a dark horse, I've got to back myself on the dark horse. I feel like a little bit. So I'm gonna go no way as my dark horse. And also, I think he's like criminally undervalued. He's like in the 190s right which i think is like pretty cheap he is like, yeah, i think he is my yeah. cheapest player bar carrigan and then yabby because i think recently his form's really good i did want to go actually go down here is a little bit too expensive for me would have meant i would have to take like another igl instead of no way um so when i went yabby he's actually been pretty solid on his ct sides as well and on the t side he's been getting a lot of mileage on his lurks so for me i think he could find that form because i feel like now device is giving him all his space back he had a really good run at, at chengdu as well so I'm hoping, I'm hoping post sort of uh, Chengdu with the positives of that coming back, a uh, bit of break before that as well, and that coming towards Pro League, I think this team for me feels okay. I, the only real weakness that I think this team actually like has is maybe they don't have that like that. I mean, Spinks is a star, but you know that you know they don't have like a Zaiwu or a Manessi or a you know I wouldn't say a Nico actually at the moment, but you know what I mean. One of those kind of like a Frozen. Yeah. Um, that's one of the big things. Or the other one is there's a real world that no way could just come and just bot out then i'm in a bit of trouble but uh yeah that that's my team that's my team do you want to uh do you want to talk us through yours i already see you've got yeah, sure. one, of, one, of, um, one of my favorites so uh i you, realized you've got the, you've i got realized now as well my uh it's not too bad actually that works out quite well my screenshot looks like an actual web page so yeah you know yeah 
boom. Perfect. You know, seamless, seamless <laughs> production. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go. You went right to left, so I'll I'll do that as well. Um, just sort of talking through things. I think that QB uh, ultimately it was a, a money thing. You mm. know, I didn't have too many options left. Um, I, I caught a bit of your interview that you did with him, and again playing for Fnatic and stuff like that. So I, I figured, you know, it'd be nice to throw him in there. I think you and I are quietly hopeful for this guy to show himself off a little mm -hmm. bit um the t side attacker again i'm going a little percentage base with him i've not nice. seen too much tape behind it but in terms of activation you know is this the way we play fantasy not quite sure it's our first out in for it we're not know? really fantasy so, people we're kind of learning yeah, the ropes yeah. we're getting here. into it we're getting yeah. into it i think <laughs> yeah. and i think that's sort of as well where where is the meta you've got like a, a few silver players in there is it trying to squeeze two golds in? Mm. Is it what I've done with Frozen? You know, uh, difficult to difficult to say. But yeah, so I think QB's uh, a player that could um, indeed put up a few numbers, and it seems like he has some good T sides there um, as well, which is maybe an angle. Body's a, a pretty good T side caller. True. To be fair, Major got to get him in as the IGL. Um, again, going to be towards the bottom end as you usually are with the IGL, so that's sort of why he's got that role not too much to to talk over um we did say uh, in terms of the runs and whatnot that he might be able to go a little bit deep yeah. um with with eternal fire obviously so yeah they they might be able to surprise us they might be able to make a playoffs which would obviously be pretty solid for the points uh stare is where i went i think this was another sort of money type thing um also a player that i quite like there's a little bit of voting with the heart here as well nice. in, in some of these players he is a guy that i quite like so and uh yeah and fragging wise you know they, they've been looking good it does feel like on astralis that changes up a little bit um in terms of what they want to do some maps you know i think stair does like entering but as you just mentioned with yabby he's a bit more consistent as like a um break open a bomb site quite guy sure, uh, sure. Guy. does that mean that he's quite going in first you know not necessarily mm -hmm. but um stairs maybe a bit more committed to that then we got Mezzi, right? I wanted to get Vitality in there somewhere. Obviously, it's a team that should do well. Uh, Mezzi fit in quite nicely. We love a bit of the merry man, um, <laughs> you know, and indeed CT side role player. Uh, really, really solid in, in that case. But I think what I ultimately went for, they were right at the top um, as well, to be fair. They're, they're obviously the first team sort of playing and whatnot, but they were right at the top of the fantasy page. It is, it is frozen. I yeah. think he's playing so well right now. Really, really versatile. Um, filling a lot of gaps. His energy, you can hear it in like the comms and stuff yeah. that Carrigan yeah. is, is posting. He's really, really in there. Rops is maybe struggling a little bit since the addition of Frozen. But the Frozen stock is going up. Um, and he's proving maybe why, yep, he's got to be a bit greedier. Why Carrigan should give him a bit more to do. Um, and then obviously I've given him, you know, that big boost of like the stat hunter and everything oh, uh, in, in terms of the role. But I think in agreement with you, you've maybe doubled down a bit more on phase. I'm going more on the individual, but I think that we're in pretty heavy agreement mm. that um, they should be able to make it deep and therefore, you know, we'll get a lot of the points out of the, yeah. uh, out of the phase players. Arguably favorites as well for the tournament. I would say in my opinion, I'd post, so, post yeah. Chengdu. I mean, what, they're on a run now? Is it what, eight, is it eight finals in a row? Is that what it is? I think I think it's eight. Was it eight in total? Seven, seven in a row. It's like eight in CS two. Yeah, yeah. And then seven in a row. I think. Um, Wait, which one did they miss? I know, did they, I know they missed one, right? But I can't remember which one it was. This is you know I should know this off the top of my head, but it yeah. might be like early, early on for sure. Let, let's have a let's have one a Sydney, oh, obviously think. first big one. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, like th this is the thing for me. I mean, it, it, it feels very. Very easy to go quite heavy on uh, phase at the moment. They're just just ever reliable. And I think that's the big thing. I mean, I mean, we haven't even touched on Group C and D, which obviously we'll do next week. But the big thing is that this, this is a team for me who I've just, you know, I think you can always, uh, basically always back. And it was, by the way, it was, oh no, I am Dallas. No, that was before that. No, yeah, no, yeah, it, it is. All... Yeah, grand, yeah, grand finals in all, all of them. Yeah, so that's one, two... Three, I mean, are people when I've definitely seen four, them talk about it. Are five. people maybe talking about like the spring groups? Were they obviously there's not like a mm, but they made it no, through. I guess that's really what matters. Two owed liquid. So yeah, I don't I don't really know. I think I think it's now eight owed. finals in a row. That, that's, I guess that's it's eight in a row. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if people are trying to say like oh, uh, you know, you know, the like spring groups like RMR or something like that. But like 
Like, yeah. but they made it through, and it's not a, not a final. So yeah, eight, eight in a row. I mean, like we said, you, you can't not back these guys, and I think that's kind of the mindset we're going with at the moment. They're uh, a pretty pretty in form side, but I think that'll basically conclude things here. Uh, we'll be back with another one of these um, next Sunday for Group C and D. And obviously, for those of you watching, um, go watch Pro League. Go check into the B stream. We're going to be on every day, but what times we're on, we don't even know yet. So you got to figure yeah. out. You check out the Twitters. <laughs> you, you know, you know how I'm it is. I'm sure it'll swap about a little bit as well. Exactly. You know, um, the other, again, it's all out there, so it's not anything huge but the other duo is uh lucy and b dog uh um, not for week one I'm though sure it's trav for lucy yeah that's true yeah. that's true yeah we're she's, give the, she's the doing she's to, doing a uh, challenge yeah. melbourne and it overlaps yes. yeah so we got the main man trav indeed the, indeed the, the boy let's see the go um, i'm excited for him man it's gonna be a yeah. uh, good one the thing is though th this is trav's second pro league he's in a pro it's league true. yeah it's true he yeah, did yeah, one we, best we, of three he did uh me, uh, oh you me did it yes yeah, of course yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it was uh, a a yeah. tuesday we were laughing about it the other day it was like a 2-0 really quick game like 13 5 30 yeah, no, yeah, 16 yeah, yeah. 16 5 16 4 or something it was uh mobby star to the fire i think it would have just been mobby star at the time not koi yeah um, mobby yeah, star to the fire. Fire, fire yeah yeah, yeah. just the one best of three but it still counts on the lucopedia mate so that's all that matters you've still that's got true. still got that, that little little that flex is. there that's <laughs> um yeah i think that'll basically conclude things ladies and gents thank you for watching it's been a pleasure um we yeah like i said we'll be back next sunday uh thanks for watching it's been a pleasure uh go check out pro league you know how it is we'll be, we'll be on the b streams make sure to keep tabs on the twitter because we don't actually know yet what games we're on but we'll find out the day before probably something along those lines uh nice and how we, how we like it basically but either way for now it's been a pleasure thank you for joining us uh all the good stuff and until next time we'll see you soon take care